Linda, eu sou maquiadora do Brasil, queria muito conversar com você, se você pudesse me conceder uma entrevista. Ela respondeu. Para! Entrevistei uma vencedora do Oscar na categoria maquiagem. Gente, eu tô tão emocionada. A primeira vez que eu entrevisto uma vencedora do Oscar na categoria de maquiagem. Claro, tem várias mulheres e homens incríveis que ganharam prêmios ao longo dos anos. Mas essa pessoa que eu entrevistei, ela foi vencedora do Oscar de 2022 na categoria maquiagem. And the Oscar goes to the eyes of Tammy Faye. Thank you so much, everybody. This means so much. Thank you. Ela chama Linda Dowds, vou deixar o Instagram dela aqui para vocês seguirem o trabalho dela, porque não é que ela chegou, ai, ah, hoje fez um filme e ganhou o Oscar. Não, a gente vai ouvir a história dela, as dicas de carreira dela. Cara, eu só fiquei mais fã dessa mulher, porque eu descobri que não só ela né, ganhou o Oscar por The Eyes of Tammy Faye, que é um filme que exigiu uma baita caracterização, de uma atriz que a Linda trabalha muito, parece que elas são meio parceiras de longa data, fazendo várias coisas, que é a Jessica Chastain. O mais legal é que, assim, é muito difícil no Brasil a gente ver uma maquiadora mais velha, 50 mais, 40 mais, é uma picadinha que a gente, maquiadora já 40 mais, vai tentando abrir no mercado nacional, que é algo muito novo barra difícil, né? A mulher deu uma aula, gente, apenas. I'm so honored to talk to you. How does it feel to win an Academy Award? And I know you had other awards in your in your curriculum. I was looking for your uh, work at in, online, and I saw that you also <laughs> did some 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 of my favorite. History is uh, Grey Gardens. Oh, um, uh, yes. Yeah. That was amazing. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes. That was a wonderful project. Michael Susi directed that. And yes, it was amazing, amazing cast. It was like, yes, another dream project. Yeah, we'll talk about that. But let's start yeah. with um, <laughs> The Eyes of Tammy Faye. How, how, how did it start? Tell me. Well, I, um, I am currently on I think my 17th project with Jessica so the lovely thing about working with her consecutively is that we very often I, I you know we talk about something that might be coming up so another project that's coming and with the eyes of Tammy Faye and so we would begin a little dialogue and we do some research and we chat and then you know um It disappeared and then it reappeared again, um, thankfully. And um, so it was it's it's always lovely because we have a chance to talk a little bit um, sooner um, before going into something. And I think that's really helpful and it helps move the direction of the research um, as well. So that that's always a good thing. So between day one, when it first appeared, this project and when you start filming, how long was it? I, I want to say it was seven or eight weeks. And um, I would say, I know that Jessica had the project for at least a good 10 years. And I would say we, I personally found out about it um, maybe two years before we started filming. So as a matter of fact, maybe even more, maybe three years. So, so you, you had like already the idea that it was going to happen at some point. You just just didn't yes. know when. And how many people were working with you in your department? I had two main people in the trailer. We filmed it in North Carolina, in uh, Charlotte, and I had Ashley Chavis Wolf with me and Renee Goodwin, and they were my two sort of key hero people in the trailer. They basically, um, they did um, everyone else except for Andrew. Mm -hmm. um, originally, I started off, I designed Andrew's sort of look in terms of his regular makeup and his facial hair and things like that. And what um, we discovered was that for Andrew in particular, very little of his face showed even in the early stage. 
And so it came down to the fact that I maybe had a forehead to do. (laughs) And then, of course, we had some, you know, some facial hair and stuff. But we decided early that it made more sense for him to do his whole process in the prosthetic trailer because um, the materials you use on prosthetics and the materials you use on skin are quite different. And it just made sense for them to do one continuous makeup. And, um, And then they also applied the facial hair and stuff so just the sideburns and things so um two main people and then we had a lot of dailies come in which was great to help us with background and things like that muita gente acha que é assim ai nossa eu fiz um vídeo hoje amanhã eu viralizei depois de amanhã eu venci o oscar né porque a gente olha linda para quem não acompanha a carreira dela para quem nunca tinha que linda parece que foi uma coisa assim e não é bem assim, tem uma construção de carreira. Tem vários trabalhos que você não dá nada por eles. Tipo, ah, e às vezes é nesse tipo de trabalho onde se dá o fundamento do seu nome, o fundamento da sua carreira, onde vai te direcionar para um lugar ou para o outro. Well, I, you know, I kind of fell into it. I had a friend who was doing a TV show. He was a hairdresser and he was um and it was when they were doing taping some live shows and stuff. So I went out there and I was talking to some of the makeup and hair girls out there. And then I I always, you know, I kind of was interested in it and so I saw that there was a course, I took a course and then I kind of fell in love with the whole aspect of it and it was a very broad course. Um it had a little bit of everything um and one of the people I met through that was someone who ran the um makeup department for the Canadian Opera Company. And um, so I started working there which was a main training because if you're working in a theater element like that where you're especially operatic makeups that are very large and you have to um you know let's say you have to really work with light and shadow to show elements of the face like if you're making somebody evil and so I learned a lot about contour and highlight and and really old school makeup and then I studied with um, a couple of people who were doing television makeup and I got a lot of training from them and then some shifts that they couldn't do and I started working in TV and I met a couple of great heads of department who also trained me super well. So I had a lot of help. Um, I had a lot of good people that were willing to share a lot of information, but I had a really great base with that theater background. Crise existencial na carreira. Quem nunca? Bom, eu achava que era uma coisa que só eu tinha passado em vários momentos. E daí fui perguntar isso para Linda. Né? uma pessoa que venceu o Oscar, que está aí anos construindo né, uma carreira, trabalhando no cinema, com várias celebridades. Tipo, teria tudo para ela dizer, não, imagina. E daí, uma surpresa. I do makeup for 20 years now, and I, I think a lot like you. Like, I'm a very, very curious person, and I want to pair up with people that do, like, succeed better or do better things in hair, for example. Something that I don't, mm-hmm. don't know how to do. Like, I know the basics, but I not willing yeah. to yeah, yeah. go into this but sometimes i felt like in my career i felt stuck like i don't know where to yes. go how did, did you ever felt like this do you do you ever do you remember something like this absolutely um i think that um i think there are times you know it's it's not an easy industry it's um it's it's difficult it's difficult to work freelance and there were some definitely some lean times where you know work wasn't as forthcoming and you sort of go you know what might i do um i did venture out into some things that i wanted to um you know i did a whole coaching program um that was um that i never actually ended up i wanted something that maybe would augment what i did so um you know when there was more time available things were a little bit slower I always took the time to study something else or to learn something else. So the coaching program was amazing. It was a very reputable school. I I spent a lot of time with them and it was, um, all those tools are things that I brought into work as well. But I never really, I only ever looked for something that might help in what I did or complement what I did so that maybe if times were leaner that I had something else to kind of fall back on a little bit and I sort of you know I often look because hairdressers funny you should mention hair but you know hairdressers can have clients at home they could go you know rent a chair in a salon on a weekend or whatever 
And makeup's a little bit more difficult to yeah. find an outside niche for that. And um, and so I think that that's where I was kind of looking for something to help with those times. For the most part, I've been pretty happy in what I what I do and I I do I do love what I do. Daí, né? Criatividade. Da onde tira? Será que as pessoas elas nascem tocadas pelo espírito da criatividade ou elas recebem um raio e daí elas como é que se dá a construção desse projeto no recorte criatividade? Do you have your own way to work? Like, do you have your creative process? How how does it work for you? Do you you, you do research um, process for each uh, new project? It depends. If it's um if it's a period project, one of the things I do is I research the time period that we're working in. I research the makeup colors, the all the elements, the products and things like that. So I do um, the palettes and the different research of, of the actual makeup um, looks of the time. I go on eBay and I get a lot of the you know products of the time really? not that i can use, yeah not that i can use them anymore because yeah. they've expired but they're great inspiration they're also great props like you can you know maybe the actor you're working with can throw it in their purse it, i know i did that a lot with um with tammy Faye, and we we threw a lot of the stuff that i had gotten on ebay you know some of the product things we use them on her dressing table and stuff like that or through like a lipstick in her purse that was of the time para encerrar essa entrevista né porque a mulher também não posso alugar ela, né? não é uma masterclass, é uma entrevista. Eu fiz duas perguntas, uma que é super importante e que muita gente quer saber, tipo, a pessoa venceu o Oscar, dica para quem está começando. I would say, um, explore all elements, because not everybody, you know, necessarily want, you know, some people want to do all of it, some people want to do um, prosthetics and beauty and everything, um, some people want to do fashion, um, there's some people like me who I, I want a, some knowledge of prosthetics, but I'm happy for more expert people to take over the larger stuff. Um, I love character work. I love working in light and shadow. So I think you find your niche or what really moves you in the work. You said you like to do a research. You said, yeah. I love to do research. So, um, I think to be makeup artist. Uh, it's not not only about technique, right? You said you learn a lot yes. during the process, and the like. You're in the job, and you were learning, and you had a lot of people in this uh, pro in this time who are, who are kind of mentors to you, like yes. were teaching and were showing you things. But was there any other like course or um, thing that you do that helped a lot? your career in makeup besides of course your makeup course and all the right. people that were there like in your daily job i think um you know i think when i was um you know getting into makeup you know there weren't the same kind of schools that there are now so now there's a lot of larger schools um you know in various places in the world you know i know london has a fair number there's a, a lot more schools than there were when i started so i came out of um the, the course i took was cheap and cheerful it it wasn't an expensive course and and i didn't learn prosthetics at the time um And so I feel like for me, it's a little different than maybe some of the ways that people are coming through now. I did learn early on that I wanted to do a little of everything. I wanted to um, take on as much work as possible. So I used to do a lot of free stuff. Um, I even know when I worked at the opera company, I got paid $10 a night. Um, but it was like amazing training and amazing experience. So I was happy with that. I don't know. I kind of love the way I came up through the process and through the ranks. Gente, essa foi a entrevista com a Linda. Segue ela no Instagram. Tem outras mulheres incríveis que ganharam uma maquiagem do Oscar e outras mulheres que não ganharam uma maquiagem de Oscar, mas que são maravilhosas e que de repente você traz a sugestão para eu mandar um ADM para essa pessoa e quem sabe eu sou contemplada como fui com a Linda e quem ganha é você porque esse conteúdo é muito maravilhoso, um conteúdo precioso de alguém que tem uma carreira super construída e que né, passou por vários anos aí da indústria da maquiagem e continua arrasando, tipo, mandando super bem. Acabou de vencer o Oscar e já tá em outros projetos, é só você olhar o Instagram dela.
loved and we just need to love them. This is who I am. É isso, gente. Não esqueça de curtir, comentar, compartilhar com todas as pessoas que adoram maquiagem, que curtem esse canal e que não viram esse vídeo ainda. I'm so honored to talk to you. So grateful that you could talk to me right now. I feel very um, blessed. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, me too. It's an honor. An honor to talk uh, to you. So lovely to hear from somebody who appreciates the work and loves it. And I'm super happy to talk to you. And I've had a really nice time. So thank you so much and be well. And if you think of anything else or if there's something else you want to know, always, I'm here. Bye, Vanessa. Bye-bye.